Uh, welcome back, friends. So, I think uh, that it's good to to go through the process of integration because in so in doing so, you are going to know what I'm going to do in the next uh, process. I just want to do a summary of uh, the Mpesa C2B integration process. Okay, so. So here I have a short summary of what is Mpesa C to B of, of how Mpesa C B works. And this is something that we've been doing. So the first thing is uh, you send a generate token request to, to Mpesa. And if that request goes on successfully, Mpesa is going to send you the 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 new token. Okay? So that is what we did in generate new token uh, function or method in the Mpesa controller, if you remember. And then this token, we are going to use it to do what? To send an SDK push request to Mpesa again. And if that token is authenticated and also the, the, the business code and the other information that we send along, if this information is authenticated as right by M-Pesa, the M-Pesa is going to send back the transaction response. So let's say that uh, a user clicked on a product on your website and then uh, received the pop-up, uh, entered uh, M-Pesa pin and had enough money in the account, that transaction will go through. So if it goes through, so what follows? What follows is that uh, M-Pesa is going to send you a response of how the transaction went to your callback URL. So we are here. We already did this one here. And you already, uh, we, we were here already. So we were already able to send a STK push and we are receiving back the, uh, we were getting the pop-up on, on our phones. So we are to do this. So this transaction that is sent uh, back to us by M-Pesa, we have to, to do something with it. So whatever I want to do with it, but what I know is that uh, the user has paid. So you have to extract the user information that is the user data. So now the concept of callback URL comes. Okay, the callback URL, this is the most confusing thing sometimes. I remember when I was just starting, it uh, was really confusing. But uh, take a callback like a URL or a, a URL where you have the code that is going to process the, the response that comes back. Okay, it can be a link in, in, in terms of Laravel, it will be a route. So you set up a route that is going to be waiting a request to come to it. And this, uh, the, and this route, of course, it should be a post route because uh, M-Pesa sends uh, uh, data through post. So it should be a post route that you have to wait. And then M-Pesa, after processing each request that the user will be sending to it, after processing those transactions, it is going to be sending data to that uh, uh, URL. And so it will be waiting for data to come. And once that data comes, it is going to extract the data, save it to the database, or do it, authenticate you, and do stuff like that. Uh, but uh, it tries to save that data to the database, or it can be a JSON file, whatever you want. So this is what we, this is where I want us to uh, to start from today. Now we are in this process so after saving this data after when that request goes on successfully you are going to receive this data and you have to save it uh, to the database or do stuff with it but now in our case you're going to save it to the database and uh, I'm also going to show you uh, after this we are also going to do other things for example now to make it dynamic let's say right now we are using a constant phone number which is mine but now let's say that this is something that is live is on our website and many people are using it. So how do you 
now make it dynamic. For example, somebody has a, there are different numbers that are being involved in this transaction, different users. How do you do that? So that is what we are going to look at after this. Right. So what you are going to do is to to set up the 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 callback URL, and then after that you are going to use. Uh, of course, Mpesa sends it data. It has it can't send data to the local host because local host is not online. You know that. So we love to use Grok. Uh, that is Grok is the service that uh, that listens to our port and it is online, but it listens to any request that comes to it and it forwards to our, to our whatever port that uh, that request to go on our local host. So that's what we are going to to do. And then you are going to save that data. Well, so let's get started in the in the next uh, tutorial. Thank you so much.